Guess where I've been for the past six weeks? I'll give you three seconds. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, or hello, welcome, nice to meet you, I am Becca. If you're new here, I talk about a bit of everything from sustainability to mental health and just generally things that interest me and things you guys want me to talk about. It is great to see you here and please do subscribe if you like the video. Let's get on with it. For those of you who don't know, and if you can't tell from my ever so slightly pretentious accent, I am from the southeast of England and I was born and raised in a little town there. I now live in Brighton, so I am basically as southern as you get. Southern, the English southern, not the American southern. Obviously, I don't need to explain that. Recently, I went on a trip of a lifetime and you guessed it, it was to America. I know that one was hard to figure out. <laughs> I went for six weeks to Florida and it was the most incredible six weeks of my entire little life. It was so beautiful and warm and sunny and I'm now looking outside at the English weather thinking why did I ever come back? <laughs> Before my very long trip to the States, I had never left Europe. In fact, I hadn't even done that many flights particularly. I'd got the train into Europe and for those of you who don't know, from England you can get the Eurostar into Europe so you can get to France, Amsterdam, Belgium. You can get to Europe by train from England and I've done that a few times and I have also flown into Europe a few times but none of my flights have been longer than about three hours so this trip was a massive deal for me I didn't know what to expect for my first long-haul flight loads of people have told me how awful it is which is not very good advice to somebody who has never been on a long-haul flight and I'm here to tell you don't listen to those people go into it with an open mind. <laughs> if anybody tells you that long haul flights are awful and horrible, they probably had an experience that isn't necessarily gonna be the same for everyone. That isn't to say you're gonna necessarily enjoy a long haul flight. They are different for everybody and it depends how you're personally feeling about them at the time. So as I said, I had heard a lot of awful things about long haul flights and I was very, nervous, especially with something like travel anxiety. Going away for such a long period of time and literally thousands and thousands of miles away is very daunting. <laughs> but I did find that personally my first long haul travel experience was actually okay. I flew with Virgin Atlantic and let me tell you, they hire some of the nicest, genuinely friendly people I have ever met. So I do recommend choosing an airline like that because they are so friendly and welcoming and generally very lovely. The flight attendants were super reassuring the entire flight and they'd come around with water and check in on you, but also knew when to not check in if you were watching something or when you were maybe trying to get some shut eye. The whole thing I really liked about flying with Virgin was they made me feel really safe. And I know flying is one of the safest forms of travel ever. I did a lot of research into it before I left, but it's still nice to know that the people that are sort of in charge of your welfare while you are thousands of feet up in the air actually really care about their job and just want to make sure you have a good time. What I liked about Virgin as well is their safety announcement wasn't this very strict, your emergency exits are here, 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 wherever else your emergency exit might be they played a video that was quite comical, but also made you listen. So it made you feel like, yeah, the chance of this happening is very slim, but they're still giving you the advice should something happen. Another thing I really liked about Virgin was their built-in entertainment system, which was so handy because obviously you can't have internet on the plane, although Virgin do have internet if you want to buy it, but I just relished in the no internet for nine hours thing and something that I really liked was the little bios of each of the shows were Virgin's own bios so I started watching Yellow Jackets and for those of you who have seen it you're now probably thinking why did you watch Yellow Jackets 
while you're on a plane. If you haven't seen it, it's a bit like Lord of the Flies. I did know going into it, Virgin wrote that it wasn't for anybody who wasn't sure about flying. So I really appreciated that. And I watched it anyway, brilliant series. <laughs> Highly recommend. So as I said, my flight to America was nine hours and I am a really fidgety person, as you can probably tell from this video and me waving my arms about. I don't like to sit still for very long. I struggle with being stationary, generally. So that was something I was very apprehensive about, but I did find that there was a footrest and that wasn't so bad, really. And I was very fortunate enough to not have any turbulence the entire flight. So I do know that all flights will be different, but for me personally, my first long haul flight was top notch. But like I said, a lot of people were telling me that long haul flights were awful. Don't do it. Why would you travel that far? Blah, 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 blah. And that's not helpful. I'd already decided I wanted to go on this trip and it was so worth it. But hearing loads of people say they're awful, they're terrible, you shouldn't do it they're uncomfortable, they're all these different things, is not helpful to anybody. So I wanted to collect together some of the things that helped me for my first long haul flight, and I hope they help you with yours too, or any future flights you might have. Obviously, my number one piece of advice is don't listen to people that just scare you before getting on your flight. I don't know why people do it. I think they like feeling brave or superior or something, but don't listen to them because Every flight's different and they might have had really bad turbulence on their flight. You might not have any turbulence. So I would just take anything anybody says with a pinch of salt because that isn't necessarily helpful to listen to. One of the best things I did was to mentally prepare myself for the fact I was going away for so long and not so much the flying, but the length of time I was away and the fact that I was gonna be miles and miles away. One of my things about travel is I don't like being away from home because if anything bad were to happen, I wouldn't be there. So for two weeks or so leading up to my trip, I just made sure I was aware that I was gonna be far away, but I could always get back on a plane if I needed to. I know people say don't prepare for the worst because you don't enjoy your trip that way, but personally, I think it gives me an out to feel a bit anxious beforehand so that when I'm away, I've already thought about it all. I don't have to come up with a contingency plan should I need to get back to England or all sorts of things. So I think planning for the worst so if something were to happen back home or if you needed to leave for whatever reason that can actually be quite helpful and i found that really helpful arrive at the airport early if you arrive super late it can be so stressful i'm sure we've all been there or have all been late for something and it makes everything so much worse if you're early to the airport you can sort of get used to the idea that you're at an airport and you can go and look at the planes, you can go and just have a cup of tea and chill out for a little while. Like I said, if you arrive late, you're just trying to get through security and bag check and all sorts of things, especially if you're going to another continent because you have to go through a lot more security, which is what I was most nervous about. But if you get that all out of the way first and get in early, you can just sit down, have just a little rest and just acknowledge where you are. And maybe also give yourself reason as to why you're excited for the trip. Choosing your seat. I recommend if you have any sort of travel anxiety or particularly don't like flying, maybe try and pick a seat towards the front of the plane. And if you can afford slightly more expensive seats, then maybe choose those because typically you will have more legroom, comfier seats, and it will probably be less loud. Also at the front of the plane, it's typically a bit less bumpy and you'll feel less turbulence. But again, obviously, don't take my word for it, that's not always the case. I don't wanna give false information. If you get quite bad turbulence on the plane, sitting at the front might not feel like a huge difference. But psychologically, sitting at the front will sort of let your brain get used to the idea that you're on a plane while also being able to get on and off quicker. This one is my all time favorite. Remind yourself why you are going. Why are you going on this trip? Is it for business? Is it for pleasure? Is it to see the world? 
remind yourself and maybe write down in bullet points the reason you're going on this trip and then your brain might rethink how it looks at the whole travel aspect because you're doing something you actually want to do. I know that's not the case for every form of travel. You might be going for, like I said, business, or you might be going for a whole other reason. But if you're specifically going to enjoy yourself or to see the world, then definitely remind yourself of why. Sometimes when we get to the airport, we can think, why on earth am I putting myself through this? I don't like this. This feels unsafe to me. But when you already have bullet points and notes and journals that tell you exactly why you want to go on this trip, it can just help remind you and ground you and maybe give you that bit of a push to get on the plane because you want to do it for you and you want to explore or for whatever reason you might be getting on the plane. Remember to breathe and just talk things through if you need to. Like I said, I was very lucky to have really lovely flight attendants and I know that had I needed to talk to them, I could have done. And most flight attendants are like that. They are there to genuinely deliver good customer service and to make you feel safe and welcome on the plane. So if you're feeling a little bit anxious or you just feel like you've got so much going on in your head, you just need to vocalize it, definitely do that. Whether that's to a flight attendant or to the person you're with, or maybe start speaking to a stranger because they might be feeling exactly the same and they might need your reassurance too. I really hope you found something useful here and thank you so much for listening. If you have any tips on long haul travel or travel anxiety in general, please do pop them down in the comments as they could really, really help someone. And I know you guys are really good at coming together and helping each other out and it's so lovely to see. Remember, you aren't your fears. You can push the boundaries when you feel able to. We can only grow outside of our comfort zone so pushing it further and further just a little bit might help you to overcome these anxieties and it does help i promise but be kind to yourself and experience life as it suits you and when you feel able to if you did like this video please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to join the fam and i will see you in the next one thank you so much guys bye oh post credit scenes i'm doing it oh, i wish i could show you my this is the situation. I've got long socks and slippers on and I've sat on the floor and my leg is very dead. But how are you? Lovely to see you. Um, thank you so much for making it to the end of the credits. I know it's about five of you and I love you all to bits because you always put it in the, in the end. Uh, in the end? You always put it in the comments. See, you guys get the unfiltered bit that I don't clip. Anyway, I will see you in the comments. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.